Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. Every year during the holidays, we see an increase in criminal activity as well as selfish indulgences and in spending money that we don't have. Many end up maxing out their credit cards and taking months to pay off that debt. Is it worth it? Would Jesus be happy about this? Of course not. Jesus is selfless and always taught others to be the same. He didn't grow up like a king in a palace. His life was always about helping others, healing, and teaching the people in love. And that Christ gave his life for us, thinking about us and showing the greatest love. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He wanted to draw people's minds away from the things of this world to more heavenly enjoyments. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Do the gifts that you give draw people to Christ in heaven, or do they just satisfy a temporal enjoyment that will soon perish? Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. One common misconception among Christians with gift-giving is that it is okay to do this because Christ received gifts. But do the gifts that he received justify our reason to give and receive gifts during the holiday season? And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense, it is a holy perfume. It was used as an offering, a sanctuary item as well as a gift to Christ. As a gift offered to Christ, it declared their faith in Him as Savior. In today's world, our faith in Him is a gift unto Him as well. Truth is, it's all mankind can offer Christ in this world outside of obedience to His law. As frankincense was a precious, pure, and costly gift back then, faith can also be as precious, pure, and costly today. Also. Notice the devil's trickery way of using the gifts to pull the worship away from Jesus. If we were to give gifts on birthdays, which we're not, why are we giving gifts to everyone but Jesus? Did the three wise men hand the gifts to everyone in the neighborhood except Jesus? The fact everyone does that today pulls the reason for the worship off of Jesus and onto those you give the gifts to. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Are we to assume the shepherds kept sheep outside in the winter? Fact is, the sheep were brought in under cover before October, November to protect them from the cold rainy season that would follow. Another fact is, the winter in Judea is at the time characterized by cold, wet, rainy conditions. Not conditions worthy of sheep. Nor will you find shepherds outside with their sheep this time of year. Therefore, it would be impossible for them to actually see the star in the eastern sky due to the fact they would not have been in the fields that time of year. 
The Bible is plain here. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, which is Christ the Lord. The key part of this passage that can easily put down the assumption that Jesus was born on December 25th is, there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. This would not have been done in the winter. Warren's Introduction, Volume 2, pages 23 and 24. This proves plainly that the flocks were not yet brought home from the pastures when the angels visited the shepherds. Some have the idea that there is no winter in Palestine, but that is a mistake, because sometimes it is very cold there so that the lives of both men and beasts are in danger of cold rain and hailstorms of the winter. Concerning this, Adam Clark makes the following remark in his commentary. It was a custom among the Jews to send out their sheep to the desert about the Passover, and bring them home at the commencement of the first rain. See also the book, The Two Babylons, pages 91 and 92. The first rain occurred around the Jewish month of Sheshvan, that is around October, November to us. So you see, the flocks were brought in well before December 25th. During the month of Sheshvan, farmers would be finishing up their harvest for that year and gathering the income that was made during that time. Just like we have a certain time of the year to pay our taxes from the income that we have made, the Jewish people did as well. Also, the weather was warm and the roads were still in good condition for travel to pay these taxes. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. We were never asked to celebrate the day Christ was born on, so the Bible does not state the exact date of Christ's birth for that very reason. The Bible also does not show any record of the apostles celebrating their own births. They were followers of Christ and were in strict obedience to Him. Shouldn't we do the same? I hope and pray that many Christians turn away from these evil traditions and follow Christ. God bless. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow Him. But if Baal, then follow Him. And the people answered him not a word.